This is the second induction video. Um, the first one was on animal cells, so hopefully you've watched that now. And um, this is induction video number two, and this is on prokaryotic cells or probably bacteria you know them better as. Um, there is an accompanying student version of this PowerPoint on Moodle or the VLE that you can download and fill in as we go through the video. Um, so the learning objections for today, sorry, learning objectives for today are um, we're going to be able to hopefully by the end of this video label up a diagram of a bacterial cell, um, sort of identify all the organelles on it, and then we're going to put some functions to those organelles. Remembering an organelle if, from video number one, an organelle is a small structure that you find within a cell. Uh, and then after we've done that, we're going to compare prokaryotes and eukaryotic cells, looking at similarities and differences. Okay, so in video number one, um, we talked about eukaryotic cells, and the example that we looked at there was the animal cell, and this is what we've got a diagram of here. And we can see we've got, look, here we've got our nucleus in the middle. Um, we've got some Golgi bodies just off sitting here. We've got a mitochondria there. Um, ER, this is all the ER here. Uh, we've got some centrioles sitting there. Uh, it was like a lysosome. And then we've got obviously all around the outside, we've got its um, cell membrane. And in the video, when we looked at what all those structures did and we gave them some functions and we labelled up a cell and hopefully you answered the animal questions and um, the exam questions that went with that and looked at the mark schemes. And if there's any problems, there is um, the email addresses of all the biology teachers um, on that page. And just to remind me, my name is Saran Malane. So my email address is up there as well if you've got any problems. So in this video today, we're going to look at the prokaryotic cell or the bacterial cell. Now, one of the big differences between a pro and a eukaryotic cell um, is size. So eukaryotic cells are much bigger. You probably at GCSE looked at your own um, cheek cells under the microscope and you would have seen physically seen them. You probably could see your nucleus as well. Whereas a prokaryotic cell are much, much smaller. Even the um, very large types of bacteria that you get, you you can't see any internal organs in them, even using a very good light microscope, where you can with a eukaryotic cell. Um, and the other main differences between this in them is that you don't get the same number of organelles. So in here, you've got an awful lot of organelles in here that we looked at in the last video. You just don't get the same in here. We say that prokaryotes have no membrane-bound organelles. So in here, we've got, say, a mitochondria. And as we discussed, the mitochondria's got a membrane around the outside of it. Um, we talked about the, BR, the ER having like endoplasmic reticulum being um, a stack of membrane, flattened membranes, same as the Golgi body. Lysosomes had a membrane around them, whereas you don't get that in the prokaryotic cell. Okay, so this is what we're going to look at today. So here's a generic diagram or a general diagram of a prokaryotic cell. And we can see here we've got a scale bar to give us an idea of how the si uh, you know, how si the size, sort of how small it is, scale bar there. Um, and this is a general diagram, so it shows all the structures you may find on a bacterium. Not all bacteria will have all the structures. So some will have the tower-like structure here, some won't. Uh, some will have this very outer layer here, some won't. It depends where they live and, and sort of what they do. Okay, so we're going to start here and we're going to kind of work our way around. Uh, so hopefully you've got the diagram and you can fill your diagram in as we go. Okay, so we're starting with the mesosome here at the top. Um, and the mesosome is this little structure just here. That's the mesosome there. Um, you can see it's a folding, like an inner folding of that in inner membrane there. And this is where respiration occurs. Hopefully from video one you'll remember that respiration is not breathing because bacteria don't breathe. Um, respiration is the breakdown of sugar in the presence of oxygen to release energy. Okay, and some bacteria um, carry out aerobic and anaerobic. Uh, then we've got the plasmid. So the plasmid is that little structure there. That's a circular ring of DNA. Um, this contains other genes than found in the genetic material here. So this is different sets of genes here. And we'll find the genes here for antibiotic resistance. They'll be found in the plasmid. Um, and also plasmids are of great use for genetic engineering because we can use the plasmid to um, transfer genes between one cell and another. Uh, then we've got an outer layer here called the capsule. Um, you might have known it as a slime layer at GCSE if you looked at the structure of bacteria. And the important thing to know about the capsule is it's a capsule, not a capsid. When we look at viruses or viral particles, you will see that some vir most viral particles have a capsid, whereas the bacteria is a capsule, so you need to be careful of that. Not all bacteria will have this capsule. Um, it's, if it's a bacteria perhaps that lives in very dry, arid conditions, it would have one or maybe it lives in a very acidic environment, or perhaps it lives in some thermal vent, and it will need one. It's a protective outer layer, basically, that capsule. Uh, then we've got these kind of projections here. Do you see there's one here? Oh, a bit wobbly line there. Uh, one there, one there. These are like little attachment structures, the pili. They allow them to hang onto each other and on two surfaces, so they're attachment. Tail-like structure here, the flagellum. Some bacteria will have it, some won't. If it lives in water, such as a cholera, 
um, it will have one so it can swim. Uh, then we're going round. We've got cytoplasm, so the jelly-like substance found inside a cell, cytoplasm, site of chemical reactions. Then we've got our cell wall. Um, cell wall is found inside the capsule. Um, it gives it structural support. Um, it's made of different substances than a plant cell wall. So although they have a similar sort of function, their structure is different. In a bacterial cell wall, it has like a protein component. It's called peptido peptidoglycans, and we'll look at that in a moment. Whereas in a plant cell wall, it's made of sort of cellulose. Um, then going up, we have our cell membrane. That's the inner layer. Okay, um, It's the cell membrane that folds in to create the mesozyme. It's a cell membrane, same as in a eukaryotic cell. Controls what comes in and out of the cell. Controls the entry and exit. Okay. Then we have a nucleoid, it's called. Um, sometimes you'll just see it referred to as the genetic material. Um, but the nucleoid here is basically the genetic material. Uh, it's the genome of the bacterium. Okay, So it contains all its DNA. Uh, then we have, lastly, 70S ribosomes. Now, you met ribosomes in prokaryotic cells, uh, sorry, in eukaryotic cells. A ribosome in a eukaryotic cell is an 80S. Uh, a ribosome in a prokaryotic cell is a 70S because it's smaller. Okay, so it, it's smaller. Now, um, on to that, I'm changing my diagram, but you can now add some functions to that. Okay, so uh, we've got our outer layer here. Okay, our outer um, capsule, our slime layer. Um, and our capsule, it prevents the drying out and it enables the bacteria to move, okay? Apologies for that, it prevents it from drying out. Um, then we have got the second layer in which is the cell wall. So we've got a capsule here to prevent drying out. Then we've got our cell wall as the next layer which provides structure. Okay, then coming down, we've got our flagellum here. That allows movement. Apologies for I misspoke a moment ago. It's the flagellum that rotates to allow the cell to move, a bit like a sperm, as a similar sperm has a flagellum for the same thing to allow movement. Then we have got our nucleoid here, which is our genetic material. Um, then we've got our ribosomes, our 70S ribosomes there for protein synthesis. Then we are going to the cell membrane here, the inner layer. So we go membrane, cell wall, capsule. And the cell membrane, um, as it does in a eukaryotic cell, controls what enters and exits the cell. Okay, then that cell membrane then folds in to form the mesosome, and that's the site of respiration. Uh, then we've got our cytoplasm, the jelly-like structures or matrix found inside all cells, and that is the site of chemical reactions that occur there, such as glycolysis or, or you know, all those sorts of things. Um, then we've got our pili to allow the bacteria to attach, to sort of stick to surfaces and stick to each other. Um, and then lastly, um, we've got our plasmid there. Uh, and that is a small, round, circular section of DNA. Um, that's where you will find different genes to the nucleoid and you will find your antibiotic resistance genes. Okay, now, you have got this box here, this table to fill in. So have a go and see if you can do that from memory, see if you can remember what they did. Um, or rewind the video a little bit and watch that, that again so you can then fill that in. So I'll give you um, a bit of time to do that. Okay, so let's run through those. Hopefully you filled your table in. So we had a mesosome, so that's the site of respiration. It was the inner folding of the cell membrane there. It increases the surface area by doing that. Then we have our plasmid, so that's a small circular ring of DNA found in bacterial cells. It's where you'll find your antibiotic resistance genes. Um, different... Uh, bacteria have different number of plasmids. Then we've got our capsule, that's the outermost layer, the protective layer, prevents, um, prevents itself from drying out, prevents dehydration, gives it protection from sort of the environment. Pili, well the pili um, allows the bacteria to stick to surfaces and stick to each other. Then we've got the flagellum, well, the flagellum um, rotates, so sort of like a corkscrew action, it allows the cell to move, so you'll find bacterial cells that live in water will have those. As I said, cholera being your classic example. Ribosome, so the site of protein synthesis is exactly the same as in a eukaryotic cell, except that it's smaller. So instead of being an 80S, it is a 70S. So that's to do with the size of it. Uh, then we have the nucleoid, which is the circular DNA, the genetic material where you'll find the, the genome. Cell membrane, again, as in a eukaryotic cell, it's a phospholipid bilayer. So it's a double layer of little fat, of little sort of fatty molecules. Um, and it controls what enters and exits the cell. We have proteins embedded in that, acting as like gates. Uh, then we have the cell wall. Um, it's protection. Now, remember the main thing to remember here, it contains that peptidoglycans, which is sort of a carbohydrate protein 
combination. Doesn't contain cellulose like a plant cell, main difference there. And last, we've got a cytoplasm, which is the site of chemical reactions. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to just to sort of bring your attention to is the genetic material we find in bacterial. There are two types, bacterial DNA, um, the nucleoid, okay, it is circular as in it is in a loop as opposed to um, ours or eukaryotic cells as is linear. Think of your um, double helix that you get in, in human DNA. Bacteria, it is circular, it's joined end to end. And in this nucleoid, you'll find all the genes for basic functions for like protein synthesis and respiration and so on. Whereas in the plasmids, these contain other genes, different sorts of genes. And I said the main example there is antibiotic resistance. And these are the parts that can be moved from bacteria to bacteria. And this is what um, genetic engineers basically use this ability to transfer genes um, from cell to cell. So that's how we can get the glowing jellyfish gene into cat's whiskers, for instance. Or, um, you know, you can put the glowing jellyfish gene in, I don't know, fish and make them glow. You can move genes between organisms using plasmids. Okay, so um, what I would like to do now is compare prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. And what we've got here is a simple exam question, hopefully. Give you a bit of have a time to have a go. It's what you're asking you to do is literally tick the box. So the following table compares some of the features of prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. So bacteria and animals. Complete the table by a tick or a cross in each box. The first one's been done for you. Remember, don't freestyle it. Do what the examiner wants. If he asks you to put a tick or a cross, then you put a tick and a cross. You don't just make your own symbols up. Okay, so pause the video now and have a go at that. So, uh, answers. Well, the first one's been done for us. There is DNA in both a pro and a eukaryotic cell. Now, nuclear envelope membrane present. Remember I told you at the start, the prokaryotic cells have no membrane-bound organelles. So, it's a tick in a eukaryotic cell. Prokaryotic cells, the DNA is in a loop just floating around in the cytoplasm. Cell wall present, well if you see here it says eukaryotic animal cells being the important thing. There is no cell wall in an animal cell. You don't have a cell wall. Plasmids present in the cytoplasm, well it's only in prokaryotes. You, we don't have animal, eukaryotic cells, don't have um, plasmids. And naked DNA present, so that would be a eukaryotic cell. Because remember, um, Animal cells, the DNA is inside the nuclei. It is wrapped around protein structures, histones, if you remember your DNA structure from GCSE. Whereas in prokaryotic cells, it's just a loop of DNA floating around in the cytoplasm. Okay, so if you downloaded the, from the VLE, the student accompanying um, handout for this, this is an activity that you can now fill out or you can do it on paper if you didn't download it. Basically, what you need to do is you need to match the structure um, to, sorry, the, the, the organelle or the, yeah, the structure of the cell to um, its structure and then to sort of function. So each one of these matches up to one from this column and one from this column. Uh, so you can draw your little lines across. Uh, so pause the video and do that. Okay, so let's go through the answers. So start with nucleoid. Here we go. So we've got circular chromosomes and the function of that is it controls the activities of the cell. Then we've got a ribosome, so small structures made of protein and RNA, and they allow protein synthesis. A plasmid, it's a small circular. So that's how you know it's a different from here, because this is um, these are small circular DNAs which carry the antibiotic resistance, so that will be plasmid. Um, and you allow them to transport genes to from bacteria to bacteria. Capsule. Uh, an outside layer, which is hydrophilic, as in hydro water philic repel. Remember, hydro, uh, sorry, attract, hydro being water philic attract. Um, so it's a protective layer of the cell. And then the cell wall contains peptoglycans and it gives shape to the cell. Okay. Now, next activity, again, you're going to pause in a minute. You're just going to put next to these whether it's A in an animal or B in bacteria. So if you find this structure in an animal cell, you write A, bacteria, you write B, or if it's both, you write A and B. So pause and have a go at that. Okay, answer. So nucleus, you find it in an animal cell. You don't have a nucleus in a bacterial cell. They have no membrane-bound organelles, and a nucleus has a nuclear envelope, if you remember. 70S ribosomes, bacteria. Remember, in a eukaryotic, it would be an ATS. Both have plasma membranes to control what comes in and out. Centrioles would be animal. Oh, two come up once then. Uh, cell wall would be in a bacterial cell only. Remember, animal cells do not have a cell wall. Nucleoids bacteria, that's its genetic material. Golgi would be animal because it's a membrane-bound organelle. 
both of them have cytoplasm, the site of chemical reactions. Only bacterial cells have capsules for protection. Um, ATS ribosomes would be animals, site of, site of protein synthesis, as is a 70S in a prokaryotic cell. Lysosomes are animals because they're membrane bound. Mitochondria are animals because they're membrane bound. Remember, in a bacteria, um, respiration occurs in the mesozyme, where in an animal cell, it occurs in the mitochondria. And lastly, a plasmid would be a bacterial cell. Okay, last question for you to have a go at. Um, so, structure of a colobacterium. Structure of a colobacterium is different from. There's a spelling mistake there. Apologies. The structure of a colobacterium is different from the structure of a cell from the small intestine. Describe how the structure of a colobacterium is different. So they're asking you to say they're asking you to compare um, a prokaryote and a eukaryote. They're asking you to, to compare bacteria with an animal, and you know it's an animal cell because they've told you it's from the small intestine, and that's inside you, and you are an animal. So you are comparing a bacterial cell with an animal cell. Okay, It's worth six marks. So the examiner is going to expect you to say six interesting things. Now, the, you're not doing an English exam, so you don't have to write it in an essay form. You can write it bullet-pointed if you want. But remember, if you're going to put bullet points, I don't just mean a word. In the mark scheme, often you will see just a word. But when you're writing your answers, you have to string them into sentences. So pause the video and have a go at that. OK, so let's have a look at the answer. So the first thing we're going to tell them that the, these are the collar is a prokaryote. So you would get a mark for that because you're telling them you know the main difference. Um, so it doesn't have a nucleus or, or you conversely say it has a nucleoid. No membrane bound organelles. Or if you don't write that, but you say it's got no mitochondria or it has no Golgi or no ER, that's a mark for that. You're going to get a mark for talking about the ribosomes. So in the eukaryotic cell it would be 70S and not 80. Um, now cholera has a capsule, I told you that earlier in the video. So cholera, because you find cholera in water, um, it has a capsule around it. It has a plasmid that you would not find in a cell from your small intestine. And it um, has a cell wall. Again, you wouldn't find that from a cell in your small intestine. OK, so the only objective was to um, label up a bacterial cell and add some functions and then compare um, pro and eukaryotic cells. So we've done all those things. So what you need to do now is go back to the VLE and there is a set of exam questions with answers for you to have a go at. Remember, if you have got any questions or you get stuck or you've got any problems, all the teachers' email addresses are at the top of this um, VLE, so you can contact us by that.